This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode of Are You Scared is sponsored by Blumhouse Pictures' The Black Phone. Imagine waking up in a soundproofed basement that looks worse than prison, with nothing but a toilet, a mattress, and a disconnected old black phone. But then, it starts ringing. The phone is clearly disconnected, and yet someone's on the other line. Ring. Ring. The Black Phone is a supernatural horror film set in a suburban Colorado town during the late 70s, where a notorious killer called The Grabber has been kidnapping young teens and children around town. His latest victim is a clever 13-year-old boy named Finney. And the ringing phone? Finney picked it up. He quickly discovers that on the other line are the dead former victims of The Grabber. With nowhere else to go and where no one else can hear you, would you listen to the dead to save your life? Featuring the sinister Ethan Hawke as the grabber, I tell you, this film will definitely spook your pants off. Just take a look for yourself from this private screening we recently held. Answer the call and see The Black Phone only in theaters this June 24th. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it till the end of the night. <laughs> the stupid scotch tape is sticking to my hand again. I've hung so many flyers, I've lost count. But for every single one, I've had to pick the dumb tape from my fingers. Pick away tape stick it to the flyer, hang the flyer. Boy missing, any information greatly appreciated. And his picture, it was actually a picture of both of us, brother and sister, smiling after one of his baseball games last year. But I cut my half out. I'm not missing, he is. Is it weird that I kind of wish it was me? Finney's got trouble standing up for himself. If I were the one who'd been taken, well, Let's say the grabber would have had a serious fight on his hands. We're already talking about the grabber, huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tell me more about this grabber. I do love that the story starts with the narrator being like, I could take the grabber one on one. I could, I could totally take I think that's guy. a misjudgment, though, because the grabber, the thing that the grabber does is he grabs. That's true. How did you figure that one out? That's sort of his whole thing from, from what I gather. Yeah, I guess so. I got mad respect for the grabber, and not, in, not because... Now, that's now, a me, weird now, place now, to start now, from, but let's me, see how you work your way up. I want to clarify. Not, I'd love for you to. Not because he abducts children. Great. That's a great place to but start. But because I respect people who do one thing and do it well. Oh, like in and out Like in and out I've seen him, you know. The grabber. Or I think I have. I get these visions when I'm sleeping. Dreams, my dad insists I call them. But they're different. They're much more specific. And sometimes, sometimes they kind of seem true. Sometimes I know things that I shouldn't, and it's because I saw it in a vision. I don't really know how it works. It just happens sometimes. I've been trying to figure out how to get it to happen more, because that might be the only way I can save Finny. So far, all I've seen are glimpses, scraps of the truth. A dark van, a black phone, and that mask. That's all I've seen of the grabber. I haven't seen his face. Just the mask, a sickly grimace with horns, made out of what looks like rock or marble, like it was made from a tombstone. Through the mask, I see his eyes, angry eyes, insane eyes, eyes that have seen Finny. I hope he tried to claw them out. Does she have superpowers? Well, she she has these like premonitions. Have you ever had premonitions? Honestly, I, I, feel, I feel like I do. No, okay. <laughs> um, and I'm serious. I, I, I didn't I, expect you to be so. No, okay. man, I'm, I'm serious. I think that. <laughs> what have you seen? Well, I'll and tell you. And what can you warn us about? I'll tell you, why don't you take it seriously? Okay. <laughs> what if I told you I had a premonition about you tonight? Am I gonna get grabbed? <laughs> God willing, God willing. I don't know. I will say though, when I've had deja vu, I've been able to recognize it in the situation. Well, yeah, everybody then, does. No, but then I'm go, like, I know what's going to happen next. To that point, like, no, that's your brain tricking you again, Ryan. 
I don't know. You see things that aren't there, those kind of things, you know? You gonna pick that up? What? Wouldn't it be crazy though if something fell out of your pocket? <laughs> right there? Like I knew that was oh. gonna happen? <laughs> I didn't know. Would... That would be amazing, right? That would kick ass. It yeah. would have kicked ass if it kicked ass. Yeah. It Sorry. didn't go. I finished clawing the tape off of my fingers and hanged the flyer in this coffee shop window. Boy missing. Any information greatly appreciated. And Finney's half of our photo. Just like all the others, before I leave the coffee shop, I look around at the people eating their waffles and refilling waters. Could it be one of them who took my brother? Is he tied up someplace, afraid of what will happen when the grabber comes home? I try to push the other question from my brain, but it breaks through. Is Finney even still alive? I look at the coffee shop customer's eyes, trying to see if I recognize them from my visions. It seems like everyone has suspicious eyes these days. You got some pretty suspicious eyes too. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just try to go into the zone, you know, of the story. I try to put myself in the shoes of the grabber. <laughs> or, or the main character, the, uh, not the grabber. <laughs> it's also not very helpful if like the only context clues you have in trying to find the serial killer is just their angry eyes because it's kind of hard to scope that out. Everybody's like, got angry like, eyes nowadays. It's 2022, you know? That's true. We're all very sleepy and angry and cranky. Uh, I think you have happy eyes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I do. I don't like how you receive Thanks, that. Ryan. <laughs> The door dings as I push against it and make my way back to my dad's car. He's been even more quiet than usual, and his drinking has only gotten worse, which means everything's gotten worse. Is that it? He asks as I slide back into the car. That was the last place, yeah. I hesitate. I'm nervous to tell him the next thing. He's already been more receptive to the flyers than I thought he'd be. He's driving me around, after all. But his face can't hide the fact that he sees them as a waste of time. Still, there's one last place I want to hang a flyer. I thought we could hang one in Hortford's. Inside, I'm furious at myself for that micro stutter. It's giving me away. Dad's picked up on my nerves. No one's looking at flyers at the damn grocery store. We've done enough. Funny, he uses we when I'm the only one doing anything, but he does have a point. I've never looked at flyers in a grocery store, but Hortford's was the one clear part of my vision last night. Me hanging a flyer in a particular corner of the front window, an awkward space overlooking the parking lot, small and surrounded by advertisements. I've never noticed it before, and right now, sitting in my dad's car, I wouldn't bet that the space even exists. Still, it feels important, I reply. Dad immediately gives me a side eye. I feel myself press into the seat, subconsciously bracing for the question I know he's about to ask. Is this another dream of yours? I gulp. He knows. We go over this again and again and again. His tone starts to darken. It's 11 a.m., but I'm sure he's been sneaking sips from a flask while I've been running in and out of stores, peeling tape from my fingers and hanging flyers. You can't believe those stupid dreams. You need to live in reality. It's not a dream, I swear, it's just a feeling. I brace myself for him to scream at me, to call me the liar that I am. But instead, he sighs. I've been looking into so many strangers' eyes that I haven't looked into his. They're exhausted, lost just like mine. Sad. Yeah, it's a sad dad. dad. Yeah. He's probably devastated that his daughter can't figure out how to use tape. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be a big issue. It's, it's tricky. It is very it, sticky. It is very sticky. Get it. Especially if you don't grab it from the right side. You I think suppose it would be up tough a, to... You'd pick up the knack of it after hanging up countless posters. Well, she's going through a lot of grief and whatnot. I mean, clearly the father cares that one of uh, the children... <laughs> His children was quite a grabbed yeah, by the I grabber. Mean, as far as we know, yeah, that seems to be the case. Is this a confirmed grabber, or is just the narrator here, does she suspect that it was the grabber? Oh, it's a confirmed grabber. It's a confirmed grabber. Finney Dunbin grabbed. Finney Dunbin grabbed. I'm grabber nation, honestly. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> I just want the grabber to show up in this story, because I want to know more about the grabber. With a heavy sigh, he puts the car into gear and turns left out of the parking lot, not towards home, but to Hortford's. I look out the window and smile gently to myself. At least I'll see if that awkward window corner even exists. Suddenly, a dark van turns onto the road, heading straight towards us. I twisted my seatbelt. Could that be it? The van from my visions? I want to tell my dad to turn around, to follow that car, but after that last conversation, I know better. Like suspicious eyes, 
It seems like there are a lot of dark vans these days. I shake it off and sit in silence as my dad drives us to the grocery store. As soon as I enter Hortford's, I beeline to the front corner, and it's there, the odd space, surrounded by posters for deals on bacon and bananas. It must mean something, the fact that I saw this space. But it's not like I'll see the grabber wearing his mask while buying eggs. It must be that the one person with a clue to where Finney is will see my flyer here and only here. I fight with the tape sticking to my fingers again and get the poster up. Suddenly, a gnarled hand grabs my shoulder and spins me around. I'm face to face with a man in his 50s, stringy white hair and yellow slimy teeth. He's wearing a cashier's apron and a stare I can physically feel. Are these the eyes I saw in my vision? Well, her tape struggles continue. <laughs> yeah, not, not improving. <laughs> I mean... Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, Lord! Oh. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Oh my God. It's our friend. Hey, he's a big fan. I am actually a huge fan of Are your work. For me? Not, not of your work, balloon for of me? your sort of aesthetic. I, I don't approve of your choices. <laughs> Can I get a balloon? A balloon for me? All right, guess not. He's not a talker. <laughs> okay. Is he gonna grab one of us? I don't know. <laughs> What's gonna happen? What do you think you're doing? You think you can just clutter up our windows and leave a mess for someone else to take down? I'm sick of it. All day long, I clean up after people. Well, I'm not cleaning up after you. I can tell you that right now. Spittle flies from his pale gray tongue as he speaks, landing on my face. I want to scream, but I maintain my composure. I'm sorry, sir, but my brother's missing, and I'm trying to find out anything I can. He glances at the flyer for only a beat, then stares back at me. Well, if he was as big a brat as you, maybe he had it coming. Our store is nowhere, excuse me. A customer, thank God. I'm looking for cocktail onions. I've been up and down every aisle and can't find them. Could you show me? The clerk breathes in hard through his horrible teeth before turning with a smile to the customer and walking off. I take one last look at Finney's face in the poster, then leave. Well, the plot has thickened. It has. <laughs> Grocery clerk, a little uncalled for, you know. Yeah. Your, your brother got what was coming to him. Yeah. And he spit in her face. I think they said some spittle. Spittle. Blue. I don't think he was like, hey, little girl. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I actually weirdly would be more grossed out by spittle, though. Cocktail onions, though. Cocktail onions? I've been, I don't know if that was put in there just for me, but I tell you what, I've been getting into cocktail onions lately. Like, really? Wow. Do you put onions in your cocktails? I love, it makes me feel like Shrek every time I drink a little cocktail. How, how, much, how often are you having cocktail onions? A lot. <laughs> explains the breath. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Outside, I power walk down the row of cars to where my dad parked. Halfway there, I glance back over my shoulder, trying to spot my flyer in the window. But in the corner where I hung it, there's once again an empty space. And there he is. Standing outside the store is the store clerk. He takes a slow look around the parking lot. Then, with a heavy first step, he starts to follow me. I speed up not wanting to give him the satisfaction of my panic, but wanting to get to my dad's car as quickly as I can. Four cars away, three cars away. I steal another look behind myself. The clerk is still coming. Two cars away, one car. Finally, my dad's car, but no sign of my dad. I glance around the lot, looking for where he could be, but I see nothing. Frantic, I try the door, locked. The window's cracked, and I can just get my arm through. I reach in, standing on my tiptoes, trying to unlock the door, but my fingers can only graze the top of the lock. I look back, and the clerk is only four cars away. So this is a child of some kind. I don't know how old she is. Yeah. Here's what I would do okay. if I were a youngster. Yeah. Get down, roll under one of the cars. <laughs> okay. I tend to have a pocket knife on me. Oh! Have you, ever seen, have you seen Pet you Cemetery? You had a pocket knife on you as a child? Yeah, it was a, yeah. Guy, Schomburg, man. <laughs> Schomburg, Illinois. Schomburg, Illinois. Rough place. Yeah, and then you do the here. pet cemetery of just slicing the tendon, you know? Oh, a and good then, and, then you, tendon slice. and then you hope that that old man was the grabber, because <laughs> otherwise you just That's a, true. a pretty bad thing to a, a guy doing his job. Yeah, you just named a grocer then at that point. Yeah. 
What would I do? I'd probably scream really loud and be like, help! Oh, I thought you would like turn it on him and sort of scare him so he would think like, well, I'm a, I'm a grabber, but that's something else entirely. Oh, you so you're like, saying I go crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You, you can out crazy the crazy. Yeah. So if I just went Yeah. And then I would go, so, are you scared? <laughs> I guess I could fight, but it would be better if I could just get into the car. Hell, I'd dislocate my arm if it meant the safety of the car. He's three cars away. With my arm still in the window, I make a little hop, and my fingers, still sticky from tape, catch onto the lock and pull it up. I open the door and dive in, spinning only to slam the door and lock it. The clerk doesn't stop. He's two cars away now, and totally unfazed by the door I thought would save me. I could try to duck down and hide, but he's already seen me, at least by sitting up. I could see him too. I look around the inside of the car for a window scraper, a flashlight, anything to use for a weapon. There's nothing, not even an atlas for me to roll up. One car away. I'm starting to hyperventilate. At least with the door locked, he'll have to break the window. Hopefully someone will hear that and will help me, just so long as, pop, the door suddenly unlocks itself. What's going on? The clerk is mere feet away and the door's useless to protect me. I scream as, click, whoosh. From behind me, the driver's side door opens. My dad, holding a bag with two clanging bottles from the liquor store next door. I've never been so relieved to see my dad holding a bag of alcohol. Yeah, well, look, dad's gone through some stuff. Yeah, yeah you, know. you know. I wonder what the guy's doing now. If he sees the dad come, well, do you I, think he I could grab I guess a dad? I, would you grab a dad? I mean, it would be leveling up. Maybe he feels like I've honed my skills at the junior level. But is it? <laughs> If and now I'm gonna grab dad, fathers only. They turn him into the dad grabber. That would be so scary. By a dad the way. grabber? No, because you always. I mean, who? Actually, whoa. Right? No, look. think about that. Because you always hear about serial killers taking children. Very scary and sad. But sure. if you saw in like the if time, they were exclusively taking it was dads, just exclusively taking fathers. Yeah, it, a Sacramento father hunter. Father taken at the park. Last thing that's left of him is the catcher's mitt, just left at home plate. <laughs> Yeah. No one left to play catch with anymore. A koozie. <laughs> a koozie. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you now? My dad grunts as I slide into the seat. I turn back to watch as the clerk gets to our car, then marches past, crossing to the shopping cart stand on the other side. He corrals the two carts and starts pushing them back to the store. He never even looks at me. Nothing is wrong, just a little on edge, I tell my dad. Thankfully, he just nods. I guess you don't need to convince a man who just bought himself two bottles of bourbon how bad nerves can get. He puts the key in the ignition, then pauses. Shifting in his seat, my dad pats his pockets. Shit, I left my damn wallet in the liquor store. He sighs and holds his head in his hands. My mind's so fried, I'm just on autopilot. It's unclear if he's talking to me or himself. He rubs his eyes with his hands, then opens his door. Alone, I sit in the passenger seat and struggle to calm down. I take a deep breath and force myself to focus on the dashboard. The reality of this trip to Hortford's seeps into my brain. The vision was useless. No one's going to see a torn down flyer, and I'll be surprised if I ever step foot in Hortford's alone again. Meanwhile, Finney's still out there, alone and afraid, if he's even still alive. No, of course he's still alive. God, I learned nothing from the grocery store, and now my dad's resupplied on booze. What a dumb idea. Maybe I really am losing it. Maybe my dad's right. I can't separate fact from fiction anymore. If I can't trust my own thoughts, what can you trust? I mean, I yeah. can't trust my own thoughts. No, I, you can't. No, I related to that. Yeah. When I was like, same. This <laughs> seems like a, a rough day for these folks. How so? <laughs> well, sibling got grabbed. Yeah. The tape. The tape, yeah. Ongoing, very you know, difficult. Must be a nightmare for this girl when Christmas time comes around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Grabbing those presents is like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> PTSD. Dad's uh, having a tough go of it. But then the dad also was like, oh, you're, sorry, you, you're scared witless? Yeah. Well, I'll be right back. He just <laughs> leaves her in the car some more. <laughs> Gotta get me some Kentucky bourbon first. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, from the still cracked window, did that man bother you anymore? I blink my hard focus on the dash away and turn to see my savior from inside the grocery store. The customer who led the vile clerk away, holding a bag of groceries and smiling widely. I stare back for a beat, my body suddenly inexplicably ice cold. I can't look away from his eyes, friendly eyes, but hiding something around the edges. I gulp and manage a quiet, no. The customer shifts his bag to his other arm, leaning down to the crack in the window. 
Good. There are a lot of sickos out here. You have to be careful. With that, his smile widens even further, and for only a second, his eyes betray what they had been hiding, an inexhaustible rage. In my mind's eye, the mask from my visions flash over his face. It's a perfect fit. The customer taps twice on the top of the car and moves to the car parked behind ours. I don't dare turn around, but with a shaky hand, I adjust the rearview mirror so I can see out the back. Bang. The man slams the car to his black van and drives off. Now I know the visions are real. I have to have another, because that's the thing I've been too terrified to think about. What does it mean for Finny if the visions stop? So the grabbers are... So, are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got him! Got him! <laughs> so the grabber is kidnapping children and feeding them cocktail onions? <laughs> That's, that's yeah, my takeaway. Seriously, is that your takeaway sheet? Hey, wouldn't mind for... being grabbed if that's the case. <laughs> oh, yeah, more cocktail onions. onions in it for yeah. you. By the way, if you guys are interested in uh, hearing how this story ends, you're in luck because this is a lead up to The Black Phone, the film, and you can see how the story ends in a much better detail <laughs> and much uh, better rendering than this. I guess that wraps up this episode. Uh, don't, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut it right there. Uh, <laughs> Keep your eyes out for the grabber. For everyone in this theater, make sure you walk out with a buddy. I, think I don't know where that guy went, I actually. I mean, if, if the story has taught us anything, anyone can be the grabber. Great. Thank you guys for coming out. Enjoy the film. He's waiting for you. Who is? You're the one who killed the others. You don't have to be scared. On that, I give my word. You don't have much time. The Black Phone, rated R.